what up welcome back to the channel i'm Mordai J and we're locked in as we seen in episode one damon targaryen tried to put that hit out there for Rhaenyra and get this get back for her son for a son well unfortunately blood and cheese they didn't execute it properly and they took out the wrong kid and now we really do have a war on our hands now before we jump into this and we break down episode two and get a whole recap if you like house of the dragon these breakdowns little deep dives then you're at the right spot Hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button, and I'm on that road to 50,000 subscribers, so I appreciate each and every one of you. So let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the recap of episode 2 of House of the Dragons, Targaryens versus Targaryens. But remember, that high tower blood, they don't play fair. This is the recap for episode 2 of House of the Dragon. We start the episode off when we see everyone being executed out of King's Landing. They need to remove them because we got to find out who put this hit on the young prince. And everyone is scared as hell because at this point, you know, you could lose your life if you say the wrong thing. Now, what we do see is Aegon upstairs going crazy. And he wants the head of whoever did this to his son. And he wants them right now. You know, they can't trust anybody until this information is uncovered and that person is eliminated. But we know that all fingers are probably pointing back to the Targaryens led by Rhaenyra. And you know, Daemon Targaryen, he don't play fair either. While everyone's running around trying to piece together what was happening, who was where, we see Allison and her father, Otto. Now she's in here and she's hurt. We know she was messing with Sir Kristen during the time of this incident, and he was supposed to be on watch. So Otto is saying, listen, calm down. We're going to figure out who this was and we're not going to stop until we figure out who it was. But he's also telling her what we need to do is have a proper burial and not show any weakness to everyone in King's Landing. Let them see Alicent. Let them see Helena. Let them see the young prince and let them know we're here and we need to put the blame on somebody. Preferably Princess Rhaenyra. But Alicent, she knows that Rhaenyra wouldn't do anything like this because they grew up together. But Otto, we know he's been back during the Targaryens since we first seen him because he wanted to put his family in line to take over, which he successfully has. Back in the chambers, Aegon is going off. He wants heads. He wants answers. Now he's saying Rhaenyra is the one that did this and we need to go ahead and attack her right now. Now you hear Otto, the hands, his grandfather saying, we aren't for sure that Rhaenyra did this. Let's chill and try to figure it out. Now. Aegon starts getting mad at his mom, Alicent, because remember, she was the one that spared Rhaenyra because they were friends growing up. And now they're, you know, this is basically like her stepmother, but they didn't branched off. So she's the one that spared Rhaenyra. And Aegon is saying, if you wouldn't have did that, she wouldn't have been able to take my son away from me. Now, Sir Kristen, he was supposed to be on duty, but he was on duty with Alicent and they were doing something they weren't supposed to do. So right now, everyone is hush-hush because no one wants to be the one that gets fingers pointed at him. Sir Strong enters into the chambers and everyone gets quiet because he has breaking news. Now what he announces is that the guards actually found somebody trying to escape in the middle of the night with Prince Jaehaerys head in a bag. So now, Aegon hears this and he's like, we have one enemy, we know who it is, let's attack. But everyone else is playing it by the protocol and he doesn't want to hear this. So he wants to go down to the chambers, get this information and attack him and then go apply this pressure to Rhaenyra because Rhaenyra is his sister and he doesn't want anything to do with her because he knows she wanted to go an eye for an eye, a son for a son, even though the initial hit was really to get Aemon. Otto Hightower did mention to his daughter, Allison that having a funeral and having Prince Jaehaerys go through the city and letting us announce that Princess Rhaenyra, this is her evil doing here. It will kind of bring the community together and have everyone looking at them as the enemy. Now, when they're out here, it doesn't go according to plan. It's gloomy. It's muddy outside. You hear people in the crowd. This is all Rhaenyra's fault. But we start to see something happen with Helena. She's looking around. The wagons get stuck in the mud. Everyone's starting to yell. And there's just a lot of pressure on her because this is her son 
that's unalived on the wagon in front of her and everyone's just yelling. Could you imagine right after the death, you have to ride through the city and everyone is reaching out to you, begging you. They have blood chained up in the dungeon. He was the one that was trying to get away, but he got caught. Now he didn't already told Sir Strong about him, the rat catcher and Damon paying him half up front and half at the end. Now, Sir Strong is saying, I'm not going to hurt you, but I don't know what the king is going to do. And he comes down here. We already got the information. Damon Targaryen is the one that put this hit. Damon Targaryen is the one that gave the money to him and to the rat catcher. King Aegon comes in here, hits him in the head with a club, and then he orders for every single rat catcher that's worked in the castle to be unalived. Man, blood didn't even hesitate. He just gave up all the information as soon as they captured him. Rhaenyra gets the news about what happened. Now remember, Damon is the one that put this hit out there, but he told them to get Amon. Silver hair, eye patch. They got the wrong silver hair prince. Well, now everyone over here is in a frenzy. Rhaenyra is saying, hey, we got to send out letters. We got to send out the word that we didn't have anything to do with it. Now, when they pan over and they show Damon sitting there, he's acting like he don't know what's going on. But once they get back into her living quarters, she's going off on him because Damon said, I did what you instructed, but you can't blame me for them messing up the hit. I told him specifically who to go after. And then she gives the whole rundown of her father and how the king couldn't even trust his own brother Damon because he always was on go. He was the stronger brother. He was the brother that had that fight, but you couldn't trust him to do what was necessary in order for us to thrive moving into the future. And that's why she's saying her dad couldn't trust him. And that's why she's saying she can't trust him. But at this point, she has no other decision but to tell Damon, hey, stop doing what you're doing. And you're upset that I was the one that was supposed to heir to the throne. But we know that the king went on to have his other kids where we got Aegon and Aemon, and that's how they're over there with Alicent. But right now, this whole family is divided, and the Targaryens, they gotta get right. Alicent and Sir Criston, they're trying to keep their affair on the hush. Now, they weren't supposed to be messing around, and Helena did go in there and see that, so Alicent's trying to let her know, hey, hey, you didn't see what you saw, but Sir Criston was supposed to be outside of the room, and if anything happened, any screams, it would be his job to respond. But now she's asking him, you haven't told nobody about us. And Sir Christian is looking at her. Why would I do that and jeopardize, first of all, what we got going on? And secondly, my life, because they're not supposed to be messing around. She ends up going back into the room and taking a shower. Well, taking a bath. And this is washing away her sins, basically trying to clear herself of everything that her and Sir Christian did. And he just out here standing guard. These two, they're interested in each other. But this is not the time nor the place. With everything going on, it has Sir Kristen looking at what the hell's happening and who's looking at him. Because you gotta remember, this is some serious stuff going on right now. And any allegation towards somebody could mean life or death. So what he does is he feels he has one thing that he can do. He goes to Sir Eric. Now remember, Sir Eric has a twin that left and went with the other half of the Targaryens, but they're all loyal to the throne. Now they look at it in different aspects. Sir Eric stayed because Aegon was actually the heir to the throne. His twin brother went with Rhaenyra and Daemon because they were initially supposed to take over the throne. But Sir Criston says, listen, in order for you to pledge your allegiance and prove to this whole King's Landing that you actually are serving the King, I want you to impersonate your twin brother. Go over there to Dragonstone, infiltrate, and I want you to take Rhaenyra out in her living quarters. Now he's looking at this and saying, this is pretty much a suicide mission. You're going solo. You gotta try to pretend to be your brother and infiltrate and get behind enemy lines. Well, Sir Christian said, this is the only way you can do it. Sir Eric, he's not gonna turn down a direct order. He's like, all right, I'll go do it. While everyone else is going around King's Landing, doing their jobs, doing whatever duty, King Aegon told him to. Aemon, well, the one that was supposed to be taken out, silver hair with the eye patch, 
he's down here in the whorehouse. Now, he's not getting any loving. He's just sitting in here. This is like his confidant. He's talking to her. And he's telling her that Damon Targaryen sent those hitters over there to unalive him because Damon is scared. Now, she's over here stroking his ego saying, yeah, the boy turned into a man. He can't prepare for you. He ain't ready to fight you one on one. So now, Aemon, he's hearing all of this. And like I said, it's stroking his ego. And he knows that he needs to get at Damon Targaryen. We're seeing a lot of stuff go on behind the scenes. And everyone's trying to figure out where they fit in. Because once this war starts, it's pretty much going to be pick a side and you got to stay there. But you better be loyal. Now, remember Masseri? She was the stowaway that was up under the boat. Well, she's actually talking to the princess right now, and she's explaining everything that was going on. Now, Renera is hearing this, and she realizes, wait a minute, you're the one that Damon said he was going to marry at one point. And she's like, yeah. So I told him about the information. I am a whore, and I had to do what I had to do to get where I'm at. But I gave him the information, and Damon went on to do it. Now, Damon flew away at this point. No one's seen him since he left because at this point, everyone was pointing the fingers like you messed this up. So right now we need to get an understanding so Renera can know what to do next. Now we start to see a divide on the Hightower slash Targaryen family bloodline. Otto Hightower has been the hand for the Targaryen family for decades. Remember, Sir Strong was even telling the king, hey, don't let him control you. Well. Now that the King Aegon wants to go to war and go after Rhaenyra with the guidance of Sir Christian, he tells his father, well, his grandfather, Otto, take the hand off and give it to Sir Christian because he doesn't want to go on a full out war against the Targaryens right now. But Aegon, this is his legacy. This is his son. So him and Sir Christian, they're going to do whatever it takes for them to go at Rhaenyra. And this is the next move. So Otto Hightower actually gets fired from his job as the hand and he is upset because these two are not prepared to run the whole kingdom man when i tell you things start to get crazy well the twins show up green versus black now they're both in here and it's just like a cartoon we can't tell which twin is which and who is loyal to who they're both loyal to the targaryens but which targaryen are they loyal to now sir eric was sent over here by sir christian to take out Renera in her living quarters. But his brother pops up and they go at it. Ching, ching. I'm talking about sword here. They swinging. You don't know who's on whose side. You can't tell. But we just know that Princess Renera needs to get out of here. One of them cuts one of their leg. The other one cuts the other one's arm. And now no one knows who is who. But they're both in here fighting. And one thing they pledged was their allegiance to the Targaryens. And they're fighting to the death. As the twins are fighting, Sir Eric, he begins to win. And he tells his brother, I love you. Even though he has to unalive him, I love you. But remember, he serves the Targaryens. So after he unalives his brother, he goes over to Rhaenyra and looks at her and says, I'm sorry, my princess. And he unalives himself. That's how much loyalty he has. He wasn't able to take out Princess Targaryen because she's part of the family and he pledged allegiance to that. So even though he took out his twin brother, he unalived himself rather than taking out the princess. Man, this is some different times here. Some different times. Everyone is in disbelief of everything that's going on. It's looking bad for the greens. It's looking bad for the blacks. But in this day and age, it's all there is. We hear Otto talking to his daughter, Allison, and telling her, that your son Aegon, he's not prepared to be running King's Landing without him being the hand. They don't have the experience. Sir Christian doesn't have the experience. She goes in there, she talks to her son Aegon. He's in there crying because his son was unalive and he really doesn't know what to do next. Even with all this going on, we know that her and Sir Christian, they're supposed to be trying to keep this on the low, but they go into the room with each other and they proceed to kiss and get it on. Because you never know how many days we have left here in the land of the Targaryens. 
All right, there you go to recap of episode two of House of the Dragons. Let me know, first of all, are you green or black? And is Aegon equipped to be the leader of King's Landing without his grandfather, Otto Hightower, giving him play by play? Because just look what's happened in this one episode with Aegon and no guidance. Let me know what you think about that. I'm Old IJ. If you like this kind of content, breakdowns, theories, recaps, then hit your subscribe button, turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on a beat, boy.